the Maverick Air. You hear so many wonderful things about the Maverick Air. They talk about how well it flies, how fantastic camera it has in there, how it takes fabulous pictures, how you can fly it easy, how it has such much, so many sensors on it to keep it safe. And then you come to the part, oh, it's got Wi-Fi, so it doesn't give you the distance. It gives you connection losses and so forth. Well, you know what? I think it's getting sort of a bad rap. I'm going to tell you about some of the things that I do that almost eliminate any of that happening in just about any area if you're careful and follow a procedure. I'm going to show you what apps I use to make sure that the area is good and how to set up the drone itself. I'm also going to show you the specs right off the bat here so you understand what 5.8 and 2.4 and why one is better than the other or they're the same. So stay with me. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the actual specs from the DJI website. We're going to take a look at the specs because it may tell us an awful lot of what we're looking for here. If we look at the Maverick Air first here, and it comes up, go up to the top, of course, you can take a look at the specs. And when you look at the specs, what I'm most interested in is actually the signal that comes from the transmitter. That's where the power goes out. And if we go down to the Sensium, all the way down to remote control, we'll look at quite a few things here to tell us. The FCC at 2.4 is uh, goes 4,000 meters, they predict that conditions, right? Or 2,000 in the CE mode. At 5.8, they also say 4,000 and 500 in the CE mode. And I'll tell you, what, if you go down, it matches up with their transmission power. At 2.4, there's 26 dBm. Now, I'm not a scientist or an engineer to tell you all what that means, but it's a measurement of power output from the transmitter. And if you look at the, and this is FCC that I'm most concerned with, and it's 30 meters, 30 dBm in the 5.8. Well, that tells me something right off the bat. It tells me the 5.8 is the strongest signal being sent from the transmission in 2.4. I know that it's often wider, so it wider takes in a wider space and it's not so direct. But by golly, a lot of the tests that I've seen on the web and other places, you can go pretty far on both of them and there's not that much of a distance for really distance. But for clearer signal all the time, 5.8 definitely has the edge and that's what I want to show you first and we're going to take a look at how we can make sure that happens when we're out flying. Okay, the first step I want to show you is UAV forecast. Now that's a fantastic little uh, app. It starts right off, it tells you whether it's good to fly or not to fly, but the beauty of it is, is you put in the options of what you think is good and what you think is not. So you can tell with the temperature that you want and so forth. So let's take a look at this together. It gives you the weather right off the bat. And right now it says good to fly, it's all green, I'm happy about that. The temperature is 74, and you can set this to what temperature you want. See when I tapped on that, what temperature you want to consider. I got this black uh, and it gets really warm out there so I don't like to really fly when it's 90 degrees for very long. It keeps me conscious of that. I have down 15 miles an hour winds right now, 50 mile an hour gusts at 100 feet. Once again, you can adjust that to whatever you desired is the air speed that you would fly in or not fly in so you can get a yes or no to go. Uh, wind direction, that's always important. Um, precipitation, well, yes, your weather map can tell you that for sure. Visibility, sort of all the basic things that you'd have if you were a pilot of anything. Um, visible sets. And the KP, now the KP, that is a measurement of geometric um, storm index. Now that goes from zero to nine. I've seen it at six months, and I will not fly if it's four, if it's three, or above three, I should say, four or above. And the reason I won't is because I've had experiences where, you know, you got 12, 14 satellites, you take off, you're flying a little bit. All of a sudden, you look down and it dropped all the way down to like three satellites or six satellites, went down to nothing, and that's because of sometimes that geomagnetic magnetic field happens and, and uh, take you out. You could have your drone... Uh, no longer be in the GPS mode. So it's not worth to make that try unless you really got to do something to really keep close eye on it if you do that. And the last thing is 12 satellites locked and that's, that's, a, that's a good thing to take a look at too. Now I want to show you one other uh, app that I use and that's called the GPS test. Now the GPS test, what that would do is in my area that I'm at, it would tell me how many uh, satellites I got in the area, both Russian satellites and American satellites. And you look down at this right now, and you see that really there's not a lot of satellites right now. There's 11 in use, which makes about all of them. But that's not necessarily bad because they're grouped real well. 
when we see this when we see this here it's grouped very really well because the satellites are scattered all over and when they're scattered all over on the outside edge of the earth that we can see in the horizon that gives our control of our GPS better than if they were all grouped solidly, like just starting to go a little bit grouped solidly in the sun. That doesn't mean you can't fly or anything. It just tells you, man, you're getting a really good signal or maybe not quite as good a signal as you'd like. The next step I want to show you is Wi-Fi Analyst. Now what that does is gives you an opportunity to be able to determine what Wi-Fi signals are in your area that you're going to fly. In this case, I'm in my home, so we're going to go on that Wi-Fi Analyst and you'll see right off the bat at the top of this, it shows 2.4. That's what's highlighted in blue. And that 2.4 gigahertz, you see, I have a lot of competition out there. My neighbors, I have myself, of course, here. My neighbors and so forth. Everybody that's got a Wi-Fi signal going, it shows up on this. And now, if I go to 5.8, watch what it changes. It changes about every two seconds. Now I'm down to four. Now take a look at those four satellites. And one is 41 meters away. One is, oh, I guess three of them are, so they're all from the same place. And then the last one here shows 130 meters, and that, um, that shows how far away it is, and we're getting nothing as far as rating here, 80. The lower the negative number, the less interference they are. The, closer, the further away they are, the weaker the signal is, so less likely to bother us when we're flying the drone at all. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells me that if I go want to use 5.8 like I'm prone to do, I go over here to the next tape and I see all the 5.8 signals on there. There's only one, number 157, that's having a lot of interference where I'm at right now. Just like you would be if you were out at the flying site that you want to fly in. You'd look down and say, boy, that's, that's good. So my drone is on uh, 149. So that's kind of cool because then I know that I'm good for a while. Now you can check this periodically. If you go through one battery and you want to check it before you go out, it takes seconds just to check it. And that's the recommendation. And what this is used for is when you're setting up your home Wi-Fi is to get the best signal you can to, for the channel that you want to use. So we're doing the same thing. Now one of the things we want to do is actually set our drone and GoFor app allows us to be able to change the channel that we want. Now we know 149 is good. We know that there was a lot of good right here in the area. But when we get out there, we want to maybe double check to compare what my app said and what the drone says and make a combination there that's on target. So the first thing I do once I get the GoFor app ready to go, I'll hit the little dots at the top. And when the screen comes up, I will hit with the symbol that looks like Wi-Fi. And then I'll get what they call the Wi-Fi section there. Now you see, I'm on 153 um, at this point, which is good. I have been at 149, 153, and you see that I'm all pretty good all the way across. Pretty much just like it showed us on the app. And if I wasn't, I would see some red in there. When you see some red, there we go, like number three, channel three just showed some red, and that's on 2.4. 2 but at 5.8, we're clean all the way up to 65, and I'm on 153. Now, I did, you can sometimes put that on where it will automatically switch back and forth as long as it stays for me in it at 5.8 or stay stable there. So you can see we are in good area. 157 just went up. Things change just like it did on the app. But if you watch the app a little bit before you even turn on your computer, your uh, uh, drone here, you get a chance to be able to set it, and now you know, hey, you know what, I feel pretty comfortable when I fire up and I'm ready to fly. So when I come back, I butt it up, target it up, take off in the air, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm still watching everything, I'm still being careful. I have a flying object in the air that I'm responsible for. So every second that's in the air, I know where it's at, I'm in control, I'm watching where it is, I'm watching my screen as much as I can and still keep good control and visual of the of the drone itself, which is why one of the things I like in this high rise of this raising it above there, my eye contact from here to there is much faster, much quicker than it is from down there to up there. You might try that and you might find the same. All the more that'd be safer. Well, that's it for me. You try all those things, by gosh, I think you're gonna be more confident, you're gonna fly further, feel more comfortable, and this Wi-Fi bugaboo could be a thing in the past if you just use good common sense and try what I've talked about here. Hopefully that helped. We'll see you in the next one.